So answering the question, what should I do as a career is no easy task, but sometimes, many times actually, the answer actually lies within you. Today, we're gonna go through a few exercises that will help you uncover those clues within your life story that will help point you towards the right career. So stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Brian back at you with another video where my goal is to help you unlock a rewarding career and a life you'll be proud of. Today, we're gonna be looking inwards to answer the question, what should I do for a living? Now, this question is gonna be answered easily and there are many ways to approach it, of which I am covering in a series of videos and I'll be sure to have a playlist for you of which you can find down below. So in my last video, we eased you into everything with a casual and hopefully relaxing exercise to help you uncover all the amazing career opportunities that exist. Today, there's going to be a, a bit more work, but for many of you, it's exactly what you need right now to reveal what you're meant to do. Answering the question, what should I do as a career or what should I do for a living is a bit uncomfortable and most people don't even answer this. Instead, they just let circumstances of the day answer for them, which is a big mistake and that's why a lot of people are miserable in their job and several years later, they find that they're just trapped. So if you're watching this, I have to commend you for taking control of your career and taking the time to examine what careers are great fit for you. Now what's funny is that people can easily spend weeks and months choosing what cell phone or laptop to buy and they watch all the YouTube videos and read all the reviews and they're essentially investing a lot of time and attention into a consumer good that will likely depreciate considerably by this time next year. If people are willing to put in that much time into a cell phone purchase, be ready to put in considerable time, energy, and attention to choosing your career. I mean, this is your livelihood we're talking about and not spending the time to find the right career for you could mean a huge cost to you financially, emotionally, and physically. So it's really great to see you here committed to making your career a priority. All right. Are you guys ready to dive in? What I want you to do is write your personal story. Do it in point form, highlighting all the experiences from childhood to present day and think of all those experiences, challenges, accomplishments, problems, underlying issues, and huge wins that you've come across in your life. Yeah, you can focus on your career, but don't ignore the big things outside of your career. I mean, everything matters. Write down those events like, my parents got divorced when I was 12, my mom would always tell me I'm getting in the way, I was always a B student and could never get A's even when I studied more than other students, I could draw dragons, castles, architecture in high school to the point where I was obsessed. I love being in front of a camera to this day and remember being on stage in my high school play or the day that I was promoted as manager in my second job. Write it all down, list out your entire story in chronological order and in bullet point form of all the things that stick out in your mind. And I realize that many of you will be thinking, well, my life story is boring or nothing really happened to me. Well, that's what everyone says. Everyone is unique and everyone has their story. Really, this is all about you and discovering those underlying things that we've put away, ignored, forgotten, or never really noticed before. Now, this exercise alone might take an hour, it might take a day or a couple of weeks. I mean, if you have to put it away for a bit, so be it. But I'd really like you to devote a good chunk of attention and sit down and just write it all out. So what now? Well, I want you to look at your life story and for the experiences that really stick out to you, state who you were, who you got to be or who you are. In some cases, you may have realized that you were a complete pushover. In another situation, you got to be a leader in a team and you loved it. Or in another situation, you got to be who you truly were and you got completely lost in a hobby that you loved and completely lost track of time. You may quickly see that for the vast majority of your life, you never really got to be who you are. You just continue to be who you were. Next, using this personal story as a source of inspiration or as a guide, I now want you to start thinking about what were those things that you were really good at? What were those things that you really enjoyed doing? Think of those skills or abilities that you could learn quickly or easily pick up, whereas others just couldn't. What are those things that people generally find difficult to learn, but you found easy? What are those things that you really enjoy doing but no longer find it fun? Write down all these topics you love, skills, abilities, tasks that you enjoy doing. Remove the ones that you don't like or that have lost its appeal. 
And from here, you can start putting these things together, right? Identify who you want to be with the tasks or abilities that you're good at. Next, let's take a look at your story and what are the themes that keep popping up over and over again? Do you lean towards certain events or experiences? For example, maybe you love to work with your hands. You like to be physical and hands-on. Maybe you like the spotlight of a leadership role or maybe it's the type of environment that you really gravitate towards. For example, maybe you really love a quiet space or completely engulf yourself in nature. Take a moment to look at the underlying motivations that crop up. You might have discovered that you really enjoy leading people because deep down you feel like you can really make a change or that you really enjoy speaking in front of others because you enjoy that energetic charge of inspiring people. Maybe you want nothing to do with people and instead you want to get entirely consumed by a project where it's just you and the puzzle, where the underlying theme is that you get to really challenge your mind. Let's take a step back and look at what we've accomplished so far. So through your life story, we have started to explore the experiences and activities that let you be who you are or who you want to be. We've also started to dive into the activities and tasks that you're good at and then from this started to look at what are the underlying motivators that makes all of this so appealing. What's really cool about this exercise is that while yeah it's going to help you reveal clues as to what you should do for a living, you may have also discovered that the career track you're currently on isn't so bad but you're just missing one of these items like getting to be yourself or getting to be who you want to be or applying that underlying motivator motivation to your current role. So for example, let's say you're a manager and you may have thought that in order to be a good manager, you have to be a serious person. So you've been doing that and found it very draining. Whereas through examining your life story, you may have discovered an underlying theme of wanting to have fun and bringing joy to people. And it's really about letting that shine, but in your current manager position. So this is all about looking internally. How about looking externally? Well, that's what the next video is all about, where we take a look at you from the outside in. I'll see you there.